Julia Birch, and today we are going down to Hollywood to the Gorman's Chinese Theater for Dances with Films 20th to, to support the wonderful filmmakers out there. They are having a powerhouse panel which includes people who have done packaging, producing, and marketing. They have a lot to say and great advice. I know the video is a little long, but stay till the very end to hear the advice that they have for uh, you filmmakers out there. And including in the panel, we have Jennifer Berman, who is part of Roadside Attractions. She has done so many different things, and Roadside Attractions is part of Lionsgate. That is their parent company, and it's fantastic that they're a part of them. They also support independent films, which is wonderful. Benedict Carver, who is partner of Clips Pictures, is wonderful. He has done many different films, including Blinky Bill, as well as Suffragettes, and they have a wide variety as well. They do everything from animation to drama and everything in between, which I think is wonderful for them. Garrett Crochet is part of a wonderful agency called Gersh Agency Packaging. They do things like packaging for directors, producers, and actors. They have it all. They bring them to you on a silver platter, that way you can put them in your films, which is wonderful if you're looking for a perfect film. Then Mark Ordesky is part of Court 5. He spent five years in New Zealand as an executive producer of none other than Lord of the Rings? What? Who better to learn that from than him? And also we have Dylan Wildly. He is part of Broad Green Pictures. He has done Wish Upon, which comes out this July 2017, Bad Santa 2, Learning to Drive, A Walk in the Woods, and so much more. What an epic panel of five wondrous people, along with our host, Leslie Scallion. What would each one of you want to see um, at what stage? You know, do you want to see something where they've done a proof of concept, or is it a you know a trailer? Is it a script? Is it just simply a meeting? Uh, you know, so uh, that's a great question for everybody all the way down. Let's uh, let's start with Dylan over here. Yeah, I, I mean, being in marketing and distribution, things are called down pretty fine before they get to me because. Um, our acquisitions and co-productions department. That's watches, what you think. Yeah. <laughs> watches, you know, 20 movies a week and reads 80 scripts and like I operate at 1 20th and 1 80th of that volume, right? Um, but ultimately when it, when it does get to that point, I think the earlier is always the better. I always feel like as a marketer we can influence. Um, the first thing we do as a marketer is make the product more marketable. And if it's after the fact, which we've all done finished films and done very well with finished films, and that's fantastic. But um, for me, there are little things that we can get involved in early on that can make the product even more successful. Not at the, not at the um, detriment ever, hopefully, of, of the artist's vision, um, but it can be additive and sort of look at things through the lens of what we'll eventually need to promote the movie. Um, I think, honestly, Mark can do Lord of the Rings all day and I can contribute to it, but I always thought that was the, the beauty of the Lord of the Rings was that you guys were thinking about what the audience wanted long before you shot the movie and we get footage back of these amazing things and then you get one that was just slightly different and you know Mark would say well that one's for the trailer we thought it would look better shot like that somebody to vouch for you that already has a relationship with somebody who can help you with whatever you're trying to achieve getting your project set up so people people read a lot of scripts I'm, I'm more in the wild west of like the yeehaw let's see if we can find some new filmmakers kind of thing um, so I'm reading a lot of stuff uh, that said, the unsatisfying part of the answer is we want stuff that's good. And if uh, taking for granted that a script is going to be great, we want to get involved as early as possible, right? Um, whether you're in marketing or whether you're packaging it and putting it, putting the financing together, or whether you're like, you know, any point, any point in the process. So it's more about uh, having having something that's strong material being able to get that in front of people who are going to vouch for you, and then being able to be, think strategically about, okay, so who do I need to influence in order to, who needs to fall in love with this material? And then, you know, having that be kind of like a tractable thing that you can take some shots with. And as somebody who produced two movies that you guys will never see and never hear about, um, That's I've most been of the ones on, I've released, by the way. I've been, <laughs> I've been, I, I would have been so lucky, yeah. I've been on both sides of it, and it's, it's actually, what you're describing is what I call the velvet rope problem. Oh, you can offer to make them a producer. Right. Uh, yeah, but, no, but, that, but that's what people do, you know, and, and then you get your movie cast. 
On the TV side, we are looking at things early as well because we're not acting as distributors, we're not acting as studios, we're acting as non-writing executive producers, so we're kind of wearing the other side of the hat um, with that world. And we, we do hear pitches, we do you know look at things early, hoping to find something that, that speaks to us. Um, George Lucas was indie. <laughs> um, so she's asking uh, what kind of genres are you looking for and um, budgets that you work with? Uh, we are very open-minded and opportunistic in terms, in, in not in a cynical way, but in a, in a uh, appreciative way. Um, we the kind of the only things that we're really not looking for are like teen horror things, and specifically teen. Um, it's just not something that we feel we know how to do well. A lot with you guys is we don't eat if we don't kill. Um, to do, to do talk about silver bullets like. We would have to love something desperately, because it's just as much hard work to make a six hundred thousand dollar movie with with you as it is to make a fifteen million dollar movie, and the fee is going to be hard, and you know, high responsibilities, and to, you know, to to stay alive in order to get things done. So five to fifteen in terms of genres, science fiction or near future non dystopian stuff. Those are two things that are also hard, but those are two things that I would love. Green. Um... We, we, we have a supernatural thriller, we like thrillers, we like things that are based on books, just like Mark was saying. Um, we would like to do a romantic comedy, um, and we bid on one recently, but we didn't get it. But that's a really uh, underserved audience, and a really um, great genre to um, get. The only problem with romantic comedy um, is that you need cast. It's, very hard to finance a romantic comedy with no stars in it. But if you can get the elements right, then that's a good thing to have. It can play everywhere around the world. Um, very good for TV. Jared? So we work on everything. We're omnivores. Um, <laughs> and we have to be. Between, uh, the, again, the, our small department, we're going to put together between 40 and 60 movies uh, in the next 12 months from now. Um, that said, 2017 is kind of my Mary Day Blige year. It's no more dramas. Um, they seem to be, it's, it's very difficult. I'll give you an example. We have a, we just closed financing on a $1.4 million project. Sundance alum, uh, director, uh, well-known writer. We have, of our six casts, they're all well-known, and I think two of them are Oscar nominees. Uh, and it took us the better part of a year to get that million for. I have a, very cool, uh, very commercial action movie that's all about a getaway driver. And it took us, I don't know, two months to get that financed, and we're gonna do it for 12 to 15 million. The other, the other part of like everything that I'm focusing on, in addition to no more drama, is can we have a different perspective on stuff that we've seen before, right? And I think this opening weekend for the number one movie in the country is a wonderful, wonderful treatise on that, is that it's not, it's not a film for women. It's not a film that's totally different in some, but what if a woman directed this? What would that perspective look like? So we're working on those as well. Uh, and, that's, and that's actually a real thing. And I, I don't give Hollywood, I'm, I'm a child of civil rights activists. I don't give Hollywood too much credit in the department of, we go on that tangent, but the department of uh, diversity. However, I'm having incredible conversations with buyers and with financiers who genuinely are open to the idea when I say, well, you know that, what if it was man on fire, but instead of Denzel, it was a, a, a leading woman? Wow, that's really cool. Yeah, well, let me send you that script, so that one's getting financed, right? So people are open to that. I think we're getting there. I think you have to find your champions who understand the commerce of why that's gonna work, and it's not just altruism to say, well, we should have more, more women, so we're gonna just, we don't care about the material, let's just let's read more women's scripts, we don't know. Don't go to those people. Be able to pitch your project in a way that's like, what if we had this perspective, we haven't seen this before, this is commercial. I think what's been really fun about my startup years here at Broadgreen has been that we have no idea what we're looking for, other than we'd like it to be able to be released wide, but in terms of genre and budget, um, it's been an experiment, and it's been a fun experiment, and it's been a freaking expensive and maddening experiment. Um, but we've done foreign language films, we've done two docs, we've done a wide release movie for 80 year olds, and we've done a wide release movie for 13 year old girls, and 
everything in between, big comedy sequels. So we're still finding our footing in that, right? But I think what's interesting on a genre basis is sort of when we get involved. Um, dramas are something that we just don't want to really get involved with until they're finished or nearing getting finished because the stamp of quality becomes much more important on a drama than it does on you know, a, a bunch of, of $5 million horror films, as an example. And not that great horror films don't make a bazillion dollars, because we've had a couple great examples this year, right? But we can sort of market our way out of a hole if we don't have a great PG-13 horror film that only costs us $5 million. In the same way, we can't market our way out of a hole if we have a $5 million drama that we can't find an audience for. It's a concept that's never been seen before. Will, they, will you take a look at it? And, but do you mean a finished one, or do you mean just a, a script? The short answer is, if it's something we've never seen before, you need to convince producers that whatever you have is dope. And so if that's, well, if you just watch it, don't take my word for it. That's a great way of doing that. If it's, no, no, take my word for it, but they don't know who you are, it's not a great way of doing that. Yeah. Has the changing market of television and what, it, what it's doing these days with Netflix and all that, how has that changed for you guys? I think it's really more about looking at the material and what it is and what the story is you want to tell and why you want to tell that and who you think, uh, you know, who you think that material speaks to and where, where it should live kind of in the creative process first and let that lead you in a, in a realistic thing. But you have to be serving the material from your heart. I think if you're going, if you're, if you're making that decision um, solely from a, you know, whether a marketing or a commercial perspective and going into TV versus film because everybody's doing TV, you know, that's, you're going to end up with something that doesn't feel authentic and people are going to know that. If you're a producer trying to godparent someone, then you're looking for as little friction as possible. You want to see quality, you want to see, ooh, this feels like we could go to these six, five, like our Amazon thing, we took out to about eight different people because it was never going to be network. So like, you know, there were eight different places we could take it. Amazon happened to be the one that said yes. But, you know, it's, there's a little bit of alchemy to that too. But yeah, you, you need to make the first move. Advice that you've been given uh, as you've gone through and, and made your career, or you, if you have a best piece of advice that you've always given. Uh, either way, I'll take it. Let's start with Jennifer. Uh, you're not going to be able to please everyone, and in order to be kind of strong, stand up for what you believe through the process, uh, you have to know what you want. I think that that speaks to people on either side of the camera, and that not everyone has to like you and be, uh, you know, be be happy smiling all the time. As long as you're kind of working towards towards the same thing, you know, it's it's okay. Mark, um, make it personal. Everything, all things being equal person with a personal relationship is going to win. So if you're both good, the person with a personal relationship is going to win. So always make it personal. You know, that's the key. Maintain a good relationship with your older system. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just sold my older system the film, so uh, he's, he's now got a bigger job than I have. Um, but I think it is important. Uh, one thing I've tried to do, and haven't always succeeded, of course, but if you can stay on good terms with as many people as possible, that's really important because you just never know where they're going to end up. And a lot of people in this town have been written off and then they've suddenly returned and are running Universal or whatever they're doing. And um, so I think it's, it's a very small group of people, ultimately. It may not seem that way um, right now, but it really is. And so staying on the good terms with people is, is really super important. You can't always do it, but you know. So business-wise, um, I think dope sells itself. And if you're a creator, what that drives you to do is make sure that whatever creative content you're creating is the best it could possibly be. Because at the end of the day, it's not money, and it's not power, and it's not fame that anybody in Hollywood is chasing. It's the actual new idea, and it's actual, like a creative, impulse from somebody we've never heard from before or something did you did you hear about this thing that drives all the commerce that drives all the people to watch it and everything um, the other thing is I try is, is my favorite Spike Lee movie do the right thing because if you do want to be here for a long time you do have to maintain those great relationships with people so when I was 24 at New Line they started throwing a bunch of responsibility at me that I didn't deserve but at the time I remember thinking like I'm a baller. I must be really good at marketing. I must really know what I'm talking about. Like, I got a big head. And years later, I got to work with my boss, Russell Schwartz, um, on another product. And we were at lunch, and I said, 
you know, wow, that really meant that much to me, that you saw in me whatever it was, that I could do all that stuff when I was 24. And he said, oh no, I didn't think you were, could do any of that stuff, I just knew that you'd outwork everybody. Okay. And, uh, <laughs> and I think back about that as like, um, you can only get experience by having experience, so you better just outwork everyone next to you. And eventually, you'll get to a place where you have a bunch of people who work a lot harder than you do um, for you, and that's the goal, right? To, uh, that's at least my goal, to sleep more and have <laughs> young people who do my work for me. So, anyway. And with that, can I have a okay, wonderful Okay, make sure to mark your calendars for next year when we have another Dance with Films 21. It's going to be fantastic. I hope this panel was useful for you filmmakers out there because it sure was useful for me. They taught us so much about the film industry and these people were fantastic to learn from. Like I said, they are the best people to learn from because they are the best. I hope you guys had so much fun because I know I did. Bye, see you later. This is me, Morgan Brian Birch, signing out. Thank you.